In this video, we're going to look at the uh, typical exponential function, look at the domain and the range of this function. It's a very important function in uh, mathematics. Uh, it's uh, often used to uh, model decay and growth of a certain substance. It can be used in uh, compound interest. Continuous compounding, for example, uses the, uh, the exponential with base e. So let's look at the uh, definition to start off with. So the typical exponential function is defined this way. Exponential function has the form f of x equal to b to the x, where b, where the base, is a positive number. We don't want it to equal to 1, because if, you, if, if b is 1, then 1 to the x is just 1. So all you have is a horizontal line passing through the point at 0, 1. Okay. The domain of f is a set of all real numbers. We can, only, we can also use this notation here from negative infinity to infinity. Open parentheses on both sides there means x uh, can be any real number. We use the x value for the variable x for the, uh, for the domain. The range goes from 0, not including the 0, to infinity. That means that the graph stays strictly above uh, the x-axis. So the base can be greater than 1. It can be less than 1, but it cannot be 1, okay? So we're going to look at the exponential function and why sometimes we use f to uh, indicate that it's a function. So f of x equals 2 to the x. So let's look at uh, certain points here. Uh, if x is 0, 2 to the 0 is 1. So the uh, y-intercept is 0, 1. The graph passes through 0, 1. Okay, that'll be that point right there. Notice if I let x be 1, 2 to the 1 is 2. Okay, so it passes through 1, 2 over here. If x is uh, 2, 2 to the uh, second power is 4. So if I go 2 over on the graph over here, I go 4 up. Notice if it's, if it's 3, 2 to the 3, or, three, or 2 to the 3rd power, rather, is 8. So you can see as x increases, the value of y increases. So this, this curve is, the graph of this is just rising in this way. Okay. So you'd have a, you'd have a similar graph with... Uh, uh, another base, say larger than 1, say 3, 4, and 5, okay, it'll just be a little bit more steeper. What happens if we go to the negative side? So let's let x be negative 1. So that would make it 2 to the negative 1, which is another way of indicating that it's 1 half. Let's try x equal to negative 2. 2 to the negative 2 would be the same thing as 1 over 2 squared. Okay, so this would be 1 fourth. And let's try negative 3. 2 to the negative 3 is the same thing, using your definition of a negative exponent. 2 to the negative 3 is the same thing as 2 to the third, or 1 over 8. So you can see, as I go through the negative numbers, the y value is getting smaller and smaller. So we go to 1 half, as we go over here to the left side, 1 half, and then negative 2 goes to 1 fourth, and negative 3 goes to 1 eighth, and so on. So as we go to the negative side, the value of y decreases. It gets smaller and smaller. But it never, it never goes to zero. So basically this, this, this graph simply approaches the x-axis, but it never touches. Okay. So basically if, if the base is uh, three, the base is four or five, uh, it's going to be very similar. It's going to be an increasing graph. So from left to right, it's going to be rising. Okay. So you can see that's why the domain for any value you pick for x, okay, over here on the right side, the graph's going to be up there. For any value on the 
other side and the negative side, you have a y value for that particular x, but the graph will approach the x-axis. So we can say then that a horizontal asymptote is the x-axis, which has equation y equal to zero. Okay, so your basic your basic exponential function is going to have a horizontal asymptote to the graph will approach. And that horizontal asymptote in this case will be the uh, the x-axis. Okay. We have the y and the x-axis. So typically then, uh, if the base is larger than 1, this is what you would expect. The graph to go from left to right is going to rise. And notice what, what happens if the base is less than 1. Okay, what happens if the base is less than 1? Say it's 1 half or 1 third. Okay, anything between 0 and 1. Remember the uh, domain over here? B has to be positive. Cannot be one. Okay, so it has to be a number between zero and one, or a number larger than one. So notice what happens. Let's say this were one half instead of two. So one half to the zero power is still one. So I was, it was still passed to this point here, zero one. Okay, but notice what happens now in this case. If I look, let's say. And one. So look at the powers. Okay, let's say x is equal to. We're looking at the base one half. One half to the one is one half. One half to the second power is one fourth. One half to the third power is one eighth. One half to the fourth power is one over sixteen. So in this particular case, if the base, if, if the base here is greater than one, okay. Like in this case, it's two. That's what you would expect. But if the base, if the base is less than one, but still greater than zero, okay, it's going to have the opposite effect as this one. Okay. So, like I said, it, uh, as x increases through the positive side, the y value gets smaller and smaller. So actually, the graph is coming down this way. This way, okay. So notice if one half to the zero power is still going to be one. One half to the negative one power. That gives me that same thing as two to the first power. So it'll be two. One half to the negative two power is going to give me four, by definition of your negative exponents. 1 half to the negative 3 power is going to be 8. Okay, so in this case, if the base is between 0 and 1, in this case 1 half, you pick values in the negative side over here, the y value increases. Okay, but notice the domain is still going to be all real numbers right here for that base. And the range, the graph still stays above the x axis. So if the base is between 0 and 1, it's still going to have this domain. It's still going to have this range. Okay. And of course, if the base is larger than 1, again, it'll have the same domain and range. Both will have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. Okay. So you know the domain and the range of your typical exponential. And you know how to sketch the graph without a graphing calculator. But what happens if you have some variations to this? So let's clear this. Okay. Let's clear this. And let's suppose, let's suppose we want to graph f of x equal 2 to the x or 3 to the x or as long as the base is larger than 1. And let's say we add something over here. So the 2 to the x represents the y. So if I put a plus 2 over here, it's adding 2 to every y value. So what, it, what, what that's doing, it's going to move the graph up 
Okay, so this will be a dotted line here. Okay, so then in this case, if I uh, select x to be 0, 2 to 0 is 1, 1 and 2 will be 3. So now the graph, instead of passing through uh, 0, 1, it's going to pass through 0, 3, right here. And it'll have the same, pretty much the same shape. But in this case, in this case, the domain, the, the domain is still going to be all real numbers, which you can, again, use this notation here, negative infinity to infinity. But now the range is not zero to infinity because now the graph stays above the horizontal line y equal to two. So in this case, the range now the range goes from 2 to infinity, instead of from 0 to infinity. If I make this 2 uh, one third or a 1 half, okay, I say 1 half or 1 third, and I would pick a base between uh, 0 and 1 to the x power, then Again, everything's going to be the same now. It's still going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equal to 2. Okay, so in this case, the horizontal asymptote instead of y equals 0 is y equal to 2. Okay. So the thing I'm trying to tell you here is you know, or you need to know, the domain in the range of your basic exponential function, that is when the base is larger than 1, in the first example, the base was 2, or the base was between 0 and 1. Okay. And those do domains are the same. And then just realize that if you add a number at the to the y value, in this case at plus 2, everything moves up two units. So instead of having a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, we said y equal two. And that of course is going to change the range. Instead of going from zero to infinity, it'll go from, in this case, two to infinity. So recognize your typical exponentials. Okay. So if I if I look at one like this, I say let's say I give I write y equal to One half. To the negative x. Okay, and you look at this and you say, well, that, that, that doesn't look like the typical or the basic exponential because in this case, this is x and this is minus x. Okay, but uh, again, just rewrite this. One half using negative exponents. I can write 1 half as 2 to the negative 1. Okay, so 1 half is the same thing as 2 to the negative 1, and then I take that to the negative x power. Okay, now we multiply power to a power, we multiply the exponents. So if I do that, this would give me the same thing as a negative 1 times the negative x is just x. So all we get is the same one we started off with, y equal to the x, okay? And we just did the graph, okay? So know the, know the basic exponential, its domain and range, and then if you have variations to those, you add a number here or you subtract, again, if I subtract the 3 here, everything comes down. So the, the domain is still going to say, say the same. The only thing it will change will be the range. It will go from instead of 0 to infinity because now it has a, uh, a horizontal asymptote at y equal negative 3. It will go from negative 3 to infinity. Okay. Also realize that if you have something like uh, this, This could be y equal to 2, or f of x equal to 2, or it could be 3. Okay, same thing. And if I write this as x 
to the minus 2. Okay. Forget about the minus 2. If you look at y equal to 3, if you look at y equal to 3, that pretty much has the same graph uh, as y equal to the x or 2 to the x, okay? So just focus on 3 to the x. That'd be the same, pretty much the same graph as 2 to the x. So uh, it would have a graph that looks something like this. Okay. Okay, okay. that's basically what the graph would look like if I didn't have this minus 2. But what, what, what does this minus 2 do to the graph? Okay. Well, what is the value of this function at 2. So put a 2 where the x is there. Gives me 2 minus 2 is 0. 3 is 0 is 1. Okay? So if I go over 2 units, this is 1. Okay? So this right here is a graph of 3 of the x, say. Eh? Or that could be y equal 2 to the x, in this case it's 3. That's this one here. Now, if you, if you have something like this, y equal 3 to the x minus 2, it's the same graph, just shifts over. Okay, so this point comes over here. So now it's just shifted 3 units, or 2 units to the, to the right. But it still has horizontal asymptote at y equal to zero. The domain is still all real numbers or negative infinity to infinity. Now the same thing's going to happen later on when we talk about the log function, whether it's base 10 or base 5 or base 1 half. You learn the domain the range of your typical one or the basic one, and you and you again figure uh, know the uh, graph, okay, which would be pretty straightforward, just like this one. And then when you come to uh, variations, you could have again something sim something similar to this, where you would just uh, make a modification, and you get the the graph. Okay, more to come. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.